So if you're walking around your life feeling sorry for yourself and feeling like a victim, you are broadcasting that signature into the field, and you will create more experiences to suffer. What is the simple definition of quantum? Quantum physics says that your mind and matter are so in intimately connected that it's impossible to separate the two. That matter has a mind, and mind is in matter. And you can't pull them apart. And so Newtonian physics, the world we live in, is the physics of the predictable. OK, we're going to shoot a rocket to the moon. We need to know the distance. We need to know the speed. And because we can figure out all of those elements, we could say that Newtonian physics, we can predict where we're going. We can predict how much time it takes. But the quantum model of reality is about the unpredictable. It's about this place of uncertainty. And so in quantum physics, it's amazing because when they started studying the very, very tiny particles in atoms, like electrons and photons, they expected that those particles would behave like planets rotating around the sun, predictably, but they don't. They respond to mind. And so now, all of a sudden, the quantum physicist comes along to measure the electron. And the electron goes from a wave of possibility, and all that energy collapses into a particle. And it's called collapsing the wave function. They turn their back and no longer look and observe the electron, and it turns back into energy. So mind is affecting matter. So, I have drank martinis with quantum physicists till sunrise, hundreds of times. And they always say, well, the observer effect works really well for the tiny, small subatomic particles, but not for the very large. And I always say the same, same thing to them. Yeah, the observer does work for the very tiny and not for the very large. But what if we're poor observers? What if we can get better at observation? In other words, if you wake up every morning and you do the same thing all every, that you've been doing for the last 10 years, then you're caught in the predictable world of Newtonian physics. And if you're doing the same thing over and over again, we can take your past and lift it up and set it on your future, and it's going to be exactly the same. So then if you're viewing your life from the same level of mind every single day, then you are collapsing the same possibilities into the same reality. So if you teach people then to find the present moment, in quantum physics, all possibilities exist in the present moment. But most people's brains are anticipating the future based on the past, and they're not present. So then it requires training. It requires people retreating from their lives and practicing finding the present moment and beginning to change their habits and their thoughts and their behaviors. However, when you live by the hormones of stress, most people don't know this, but there's an invisible field of energy around your body. And when you react to someone or something, you draw from this invisible field and you turn it into chemistry and the field around your body shrinks. How do I know? I measured it. And now you're more matter and less energy. You're more particle and less wave. And most people then, when you are matter trying to change matter, you always try to force the outcome. You try to control the outcome. You try to predict the outcome. And people then get competitive, or they hold on, or they manipulate, or they cheat, or they steal, because that's the only way they can get what they want. But the quantum model of reality, when you are truly in the present moment, and we've measured this in brain scan after brain scan, you forget that you're a woman. You forget your name. You forget your age. You forget your culture. 
You forget your past, you forget your future, you forget that you have a body, you forget that you have parents. When you're truly in the present moment, you go from putting your attention on your body, your environment and time, to becoming nobody. No one, no thing, nowhere, in no time. You become a thought, alone, in possibility. And if you are going to heal your body by thought alone, or change something in your life by thought alone, then you have to become thought alone. And teaching people how to linger in this place of the unknown is what begins to change their energy. We also measured when a person begins to open their heart and they can begin to sustain a elevated emotion they begin to broaden the magnetic field around their body to nine meters wide. Now they're more energy than matter. They're more wave than particle. And they can exert better effects on reality. So then think of when you open your heart, this is science, like dropping a pebble in water. You produce a ripple. If you drop a bigger stone, you produce a bigger ripple. If you're able to sustain that state, you keep dropping the same rock over and over again, and you broadcast a signature into the field. The emotion is the magnetic charge. Your intention, your thought, is the information that's carried on that wave. And when you combine a clear intention with an elevated emotion, you begin to produce an effect on matter. You see, the thoughts that you think are the electrical charge in the quantum field. The feelings that you emote are the magnetic charge in the quantum field. And how you think and how you feel broadcasts an electromagnetic signature that influences every single atom in your life. The thought sends the signal out and the feeling draws the event back. So if you're walking around your life feeling sorry for yourself and feeling like a victim, you are broadcasting that signature into the field and you will create more experiences to suffer. And sin is an attitude and sin is how you think and how you feel. It takes training and it takes practice and it takes learning new information and deprogramming ourselves into believing that we're limited. Because just like people believe that an infection can produce a disease amongst the community, I believe that wellness is as infectious as disease. But if you're living by the hormones of stress and you have no energy, no field, then you can't produce an effect on matter. So then, life is about the management of energy. And where you place your attention is where you place your energy. And if your attention is on the knowns and in the predictable future, or your attention is on the familiar emotions of the past, you are siphoning energy out of the present moment and you have no energy to create with. Getting people beyond their identity, getting people beyond their past, getting people beyond predicting their future, getting people beyond their faces or their wardrobes or their sports cars or their importance, getting beyond all those things is when they begin to make contact with the quantum field. You can't enter the quantum field as a somebody you have to enter as a nobody. And when you're able to do this and practice it really well, you will begin to do what's innately your birthright, and that is to create an unknown or wonderful experience in your life. So it just takes practice in order to do it.